Uh, finally, we get to balancing equations, and we don't want to take this for granted. It's just a, a simple concept, but just what are, what are the different things we can mean when we look at an equation like this? Um, the first thing is the coefficients. We notice we can read this as like one molecule of sodium carbonate is going to react with two molecules of hydrochloric acid. Both of them are in the aqueous state, which means they're in a solution. They're dissolved in water. Um, and then they're going to give off carbon dioxide gas, just one of those molecules. One more water molecule. This one's going to be liquid since the solvent is liquid. It's just making more solvent and diluting the solution a little bit. And then two salt molecules that are also in solution. So we can look at the phases and the numbers. Um, on a really simple level, we say these are molecules, um, but we can also say that those are moles as well. Um, so molar masses, how does conservation of mass work? Well, if you have the same number of molecules when you're balancing equations on the same side, um, we should get the, the same masses on both sides. So, so all of their molar masses are, are shown there on the screen. That's taking into account the coefficients. So three oxygens, three O2s, that gives me six oxygen molecules. Um, we add all of these up. We get 142.08 grams on that side, or AMUs if we wanted to talk about molecules, or 142.08 on that side. So conservation of mass, we have to have the same amount of stuff on both sides. To do that, we add coefficients only. And as a visual, um, these lines are actually really helpful uh, in showing that we only add subscripts or coefficients. We don't actually change the subscripts of the molecules themselves. Um, you kind of guess and check to go back and forth here. Oxygen is in all of the molecules, so we kind of want to do that one last. Um, the hydrogens are already balanced, so here I have three oxygens on this side, and of course the arrow is our break. We need to have the same number of atoms on both sides of that arrow. Um, so to get more oxygens over here, I'm just going to put a two. Now that changed my hydrogens as well, so I'm going to put a two there. Now I have four hydrogens on both sides four oxygens and four oxygens. Um, so we have the same number of hydrogens and oxygens on both sides. Um, we don't want to neglect that there is a one there as well. You don't need to write that one, um, but do know that it's there. Um, this next one, we kind of, again, oxygens and a lot of different molecules. We start with the other things, it'll be a little bit easier. Um, I noticed that there are three carbons here. So let's go to the other side and make three carbons. Um, I noticed that there are eight hydrogens here. So let's go to the other side and multiply that by four to get eight hydrogens there. Um, keeping track of the oxygens, we get uh, 10 now on the product side of the reaction. So adding a five there will give us 10 there. Um, these are relatively simple. Don't forget about the one. Um, just can you go back and forth? Guess and check is really the only way to do these. You just kind of go back and forth to see what you have. Um, balance the following chemical equations. Um, now, there's two ways to do this one. You'll notice here that there is a polyatomic ion. I'm going to underline that in blue. It's phosphate on phosphate. And it's on both sides of the balanced equation. Do not break that apart into phosphorus and oxygen. If it's on both sides, keep it together as phosphate. Now, there's a hydroxide over here, too. But hydroxide is not on the other side of the equation. Um, so that's not one that we're going to want to keep track of. But the phosphates, you can just say, I have one phosphate on this side, one phosphate on this side. Okay. Um, the easy way to do this is going to say, okay, there are three sodiums. Let's go over here and add three sodiums. Oh, let me make this a little better. Okay, so three sodiums, um, one phosphate, and now we just have to deal with the oxygens and hydrogens in that water because everything else is taken care of. Um, a shortcut here, and we're going to use this all year long, is recognizing that this hydroxide is actually a base, and it's a negative ion. Okay, so there's our introduction to bases. Hydroxides are called bases. This is an acid-base reaction. Um, and this hydrogen over here is an acid. 
positive hydrogen ions are acids. And you can see when you just have an acid and a base together, they're going to make water. So that's really what's happening here is this hydrogen and hydroxide are making water molecules. The easiest way to see this is to count the acid base particles and balance them because they will react in a one to one ratio. And you'll notice here we already did the sodiums. We have three base particles, three hydroxides. There are three acid particles. We're going to make three water molecules. Now, you can count the hydrogens if you want separately. There are three there and three there, so that gives me six. Or just the oxygens, three oxygens, three oxygens. That, it'll work the same way if you guess and check. Uh, but if you recognize it as an acid-base equation, you can get a little bit of a shortcut. Um, here's another one that is, is very, very common when you're doing combustion reactions, uh, where guess and check um, kind of fails you at first and then you have to keep going. Um, let's just take the same strategy here. Four carbons, let's come over here and say four carbons. Um, we have ten hydrogens, so let's come over here and get ten hydrogens. But then we'll notice we've got, if we look at the oxygens, we have um, eight here and five here. That gives us a total of thirteen oxygens. Well, oxygens only come in pairs of two, so that doesn't work. So these fours and fives don't work because that gives me 13 oxygens, and I cannot have an odd number of oxygens. I have to have an even number. Um, so guess and check says, okay, this four and five is in proportion to this C4H10. That is correct, but we need to get these to be an even number of oxygens. To do that, we just go ahead and we go back and say, okay, well, a one didn't work here. How about a two? And if that's a two, and we had uh, four and five, one second. Okay, I'm just going to cross them out. If that was a 2 and we had 4 and 5, then we're just going to make this an 8 and a 10. So we double everything. Well, now I don't have 13 oxygens, I have 26. And I can get a 13 here to say I have 26 oxygens on that side as well. So 2, 13, 8, and 10. Um, it's really common to have an odd number of oxygens when you need an even number. Um, and then we get into actual stoichiometry. Now that, we, now that we understand how to balance equations, we can use those to convert from one product or one reactant to another or one product to another, very much like a recipe. If you have this much of this ingredient, how much of this other ingredient do you need? Um, so let's check our equation to make sure it's balanced first. Two sodiums over here. We'll come on to the other side. We need two sodiums there. Um, two nitrates, keep that all together as one. I need two nitrates over there. Two silvers, two silvers. And then there's one sulfur on each side. So we're good with there. We needed two coefficients to add it. Then we look at the question and we said, how many moles of silver sulfide, which is over here, can be generated from the reaction of 3.94 moles of silver nitrate? So now we've got units that are changing. The actual molecules themselves are different. We haven't had that yet. Both of them are in moles. The question has both in moles. So if you don't write the molecules down, you're going to mess these up. We need to convert from um, silver nitrate to silver sulfide. If I have this much of this ingredient, how much product can I make? And we use the balanced equation as a guide because that is the proportion that they react in. So we start out like we do any other dimensional analysis problem, 3.94 moles, and we have to write silver nitrate. And the ratio from silver nitrate to silver sulfide is 2 to 1. There are two silver nitrates. We'll make one silver sulfide. So we say I need the silver nitrate to cancel out. 2 moles of silver nitrate will make one mole of silver sulfide. Okay, 
Um, so, and that makes sense. It's half. If I start out with 3.94, I'm going to get half as much because two of them are going to make uh, one final product. So that's going to give me 1.97 units here, moles of silver sulfide. Okay, we cross those out. And then the units that we're left with are silver sulfide moles. Um, do it again. We say, <clears throat> how many moles of silver nitrate? are needed to react with 4.151 moles of sodium sulfide. Uh, the words here changed, but the math is identical. Um, just because the words will change because depending on what side of the balanced equation you're talking about. The first one we said, how much product can I make from this reactant? The second one is saying, how much of this reactant do I need to react with this other reactant? We could envision another problem that says, how much product can I make with this other amount of product. The math is identical, the words change based on where the substances are. Um, so 4.51, we have moles of sodium sulfide, and we need silver nitrate. So it is a, again, a one to two ratio. This time it's gonna get bigger though. For every one mole of sodium sulfide, there are two moles of silver nitrate. So the answer there is going to be double 9.02 moles of where it's silver nitrate. Okay, so our units canceled out for the sodium sulfide, and the units we're left with at the end are moles of silver nitrate. So the molecules are really important to write down there. Here we have the same balanced equation. Um, let's go ahead and balance it again. We had two silver nitrates and two sodium nitrates. And now we just take this one step further, put everything together that we've learned with all of the conversions. Um, now that we know that moles, the coefficients, let us convert between molecules. I can go from one to the other, depending on what the problem is. Um, and moles are related to grams. Uh, we put it all together and we can convert from grams to one substance to grams to another. So this question says, how many grams of silver sulfide can we get from 3.94 grams of silver nitrate? So we're switching from silver nitrate to silver sulfide. All right, 3.94 grams of silver nitrate. And we can't switch until we get into moles, so the first thing we need to do is how many, what's the molar mass of silver nitrate? It's 169.88 for every one mole of silver nitrate. All right, so now that those are good, we can convert from silver nitrate to silver sulfide, and we know that there are two moles of silver nitrate. for every one mole of silver sulfide. And since we need to get back into grams, we need the molar mass of silver sulfide. We know that every one mole of silver sulfide is going to be 247.8 grams. And that's the moles relationship is our go-between from one substance to another. So we get 2.87 grams. Okay, let's try another one. <clears throat> How many grams of silver chloride, which is over here, can be produced from 54.5 grams of magnesium chloride? Uh, so 54.5 grams MgCl2. It looks like this, this equation is already balanced for us. Um, we need the molar mass of magnesium chloride because we're in grams. We need, always need to continue that. 95.21 grams. All right. So that'll get rid of that. The relationship is 
a one mole of magnesium chloride is going to be this equal to two moles of silver chloride. Um, even if you didn't have a calculator for this, we do expect you to be able to set up these problems and estimate the, the answers um, without a calculator. So how do you round and combine things uh, to get as good an answer as you can? So the silver chloride is going to be 143.32 grams. Uh, for instance, in this case, we could say round this to 50. 50 over 100, that's 0. 0.5, times 2, that's 1, times 143. So the answer is, should be pretty close to 143, and this is a little bigger than 50. This is a little smaller than 100, so we should expect it to be actually a little bit bigger than 143, because this is not quite 1 to 2 or 50 over 100, it's, it's actually a bigger number than that. Uh, the, answer, the actual answer comes out to be, when we get our calculators with sig figs, 164 grams, which is indeed just a little bit bigger than 143. Um, so with or without a calculator, we need to be able to set these up explicitly and then um, est use estimates to give us a general answer. If you, had a, you would only not use a calculator if you had a multiple choice, so you had some answers that you could rule out. Uh, but that's the end of that stoichiometry.